Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan. I'm trying to keep it down. My children are going to bed now. Um, I'm sorry also too if my voice gets a little scratchy sometimes. Um, I just, I'm just getting over the flu and bronchitis. Um, anyway, <clears throat> yesterday I read from the book of Matthew chapters 1 through 4 and today I'd like to read and discuss chapter 5. Um, I want to tell you right up front, okay, I am not a pastor or any kind of professional teacher of the scriptures, but I am a disciple and I do love the Lord. So um, we can read this and think, of, think over the key verses together, okay? All right, anyway, so I'm going to start from chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, the Beatitudes. Right, and it says, <clears throat> And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was, and when he was seated, he, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Are you hungry and thirsty for his righteousness? I am. I'm starving. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for yours, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So if you're having a hard time, people are giving a hard time about giving you a hard time about your faith, be glad. Okay? It's a blessing in disguise. Alright? Your reward is great. Alright, believers are salt and light. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. This is one of my favorite verses. Verse 14. <clears throat> you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light shine so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right. This next part. Um, I'm looking at this Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. I find this verse quite interesting. A lot of people say, you know, you know, Christ died on the cross for me, so I'm under grace, and I'm no longer under law, so I no longer have to obey rules or anything that was said in the Old Testament. But in verse 17, it says clearly in red lettering, that's Jesus' own words, that means, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. That's what Jesus said. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So the laws didn't vanish. The rules didn't change just because Jesus came. You see, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So is his word. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will be will be will by no means pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. Not one jot or one tittle will pass away until heaven and earth pass away. That means it's forever, just like he's forever. Whosoever therefore breaks one of, the, one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But, whosoever, but whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the, the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Ooh. 
doesn't sound like, you know, the grace that everybody's talking about, you know, that I can do all things and it's okay because I'm under grace. Mm. Says that your righteousness has to exceed the Pharisees. Wow, that's kind of a tall order, don't you think? But with 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 Jesus' help, with his Holy Spirit, we can achieve this. It's not impossible. All things are possible in Christ who strengthens us. Alright, let's move on. Murder begins in the heart. Verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Of the judgment, sorry. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. This I myself have to be careful not to call people fool or stupid. Okay. We should all really strive to, to control our tongues because there is life and death in our tongues. Lord, please forgive me for running my mouth and have mercy on me, a sinner. Help me to control it. <laughs> uh, lead me with your Holy Spirit instead of letting me lead, lead you know, people into anger or whatever with my mouth. Um, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. So if you've got a problem with someone, you better deal with it right away before it festers and just gets totally blown out of proportion. Assuredly, I say to you, you will, be, you will by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. So if you don't make amends with people, you will f pay the full penalty for it. Adultery in the heart. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust, her, lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That means you can be not married. You could be a single guy or a single woman. But if you're looking at someone in a lustful way, you're already committing adultery. Adultery, too. Um, the Lord talks about adultery against him. That means having idols in your heart. Putting things above him, above your love for him. That's adultery as well. Okay, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you, for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Marriage is sacred and binding. Yes, sacred binding till death do you part you know we really need to think about that i've been married 16 years okay this next uh september i believe yeah 16 years <laughs> all right and it's not easy and my husband he's not saved okay and i'm paying the price for that i got saved after i got married to him but you know what it's really difficult I mean, every day is a, there's a new struggle, but I love my husband, and if I were to separate myself from him, it would be like cutting off my arm, okay? I don't know if I can cut off my arm. It would be like, I don't know, just digging one of my kidneys out, cutting myself open and digging one of my kidneys out, or taking one of my lungs or something, because you see... To become one. Alright? Anyway, so verse 31. Furthermore, it has been said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. So if you leave your wife, you cause her to commit adultery as well. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. So... 
I know the church nowadays, um, a lot of people get divorced. There's a very high divorce rate. Maybe the guy that you were married to or the woman you were married to wasn't a godly person. Maybe there was some kind of abuse. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys just, just I don't know, fell out of love. I don't know what it is. Okay? And the church nowadays finds it totally acceptable to just remarry, you know? And this is what God is saying about that. Okay, this is what Jesus thinks about that. The problem with man is that um, they don't want God to tell them no on something they know is not right. So they just do it and then ask for his blessing later. They don't ask him before. They don't ask his opinion. They don't seek his face first. It says in Matthew 6, 6.33, Seek my kingdom for, and, and its righteousness first, and all these things shall be added to you. Nobody seeks him first. You know? And they try to just, I'm going to do this thing, Lord. Have a good day. See, I told you, so therefore it's okay. That's not praying about it. That's not asking you know, what he thinks about it. <laughs> That's just forcing your will on on him. Just forcing, just telling him, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. See you later, God. <laughs> well, we'll see in the end what happens to that. But anyway, this is what the Lord has to say about that, though. Okay? He says that if you divorce your wife, you cause, him, cause her to uh, commit adultery. And anyone who marries her commits adultery. Okay? Jesus forbids oaths, okay? You shouldn't make promises or oaths you cannot keep because Jesus forbids it, all right? In verse 33, it says, Again, you have heard that it was said of those of old, You shall not, fear, you shall not swear falsely, but, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Okay, so don't make promises, period. Going the second mile. Okay, verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you... To not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. So if somebody smacks you instead of retaliating, let him have the other one. Forgive him. This is, an, this is the essence of forgiveness, actually, if you think about it. If somebody hits you, you offer the other cheek that's saying, I forgive you. Okay? So if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic... Let him have your cloak also, and whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who, who asks of you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. This next um, section is words I live by. I have to live by them every day. I have to tell myself this every day because I tell you I live in a very difficult um, situation. Um, if you guys don't know, please watch my video on my testimony. Okay, it says love your enemies, or the other one, and the other one too is good, busy, being under Satan's yoke. Please watch either one of those and you will know what I'm talking about. But anyway, love your enemies. These are words I live by. Okay, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that ye may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? How are you any better, is what he's saying. Okay, if you're following me, then you're supposed to be different. That's what he's saying here. Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you'll. Sh this is the really tall order here, okay? But think about it, okay? It's not impossible. But verse 48 says something that sounds pretty impossible. It says, Therefore, 
You shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, none of us can be perfect in our own strength. It's impossible. We are fallen. But through His Holy Spirit, the Lord has provided a helper, the Holy Spirit. And um, His Word also says, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Okay, so ask Him to lead you. Ask Him to make you perfect by leading you with His Holy Spirit. And listen, that's part of the key. You know, He leads us all the time. He, he, st he speaks to us in a small, still, calm voice. But the problem is, a lot of times we're not listening. We can't hear it. Or we want to do our own thing. We let our own um, flesh dominate how we're going to to behave a lot of the time okay we gotta die to the flesh we have to take up our crosses every day we have to die to ourselves that's what dying to ourselves is about you know you got an urge to do things in your own way that's your ego you know and that's your pride okay pride is what makes us sin too okay so pride okay the word pride P-R-I-D-E and S-I-N, sin. What do they have in common? What's right smack in the middle of both words? I. So take I out of the equation. Put the Holy Spirit in, you know, listen to, you know, the Lord, okay? Love the Lord, Listen to him and follow him, and you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to close up on this today. I tried to make this video earlier, and I did it with my iPhone at school. I only had 15 minutes, but I get really nervous, and sometimes I kind of you know, mispronounce words and, and things like that. And... Um, I made the video at school, but I think that probably the Lord didn't want me to upload it or something. He thought I didn't do good enough because I tried to load it three times <laughs> to YouTube and it failed. So I'm doing it over. This is my fourth and hopefully my final take. I hope this time it will be accepted onto YouTube. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this conversation, reading the, the reading as we're getting into the Word and uh, discussing it together with me. Like I said before, <laughs> I am no pastor. My brother is a pastor, though. I am just a teacher um, who loves the Lord. I'm a disciple. Okay, I'm a follower more than anything, okay? And I love the Lord, and I just want others to discover why I love the Lord and what he can do for you. So until next time, uh, I pray that you all be blessed in Yahushua's name. Good night. Bye.